Interesting story, right? I don't know what uh, Steve Biko has to say about this. Steve is a financial research expert. Just is here to talk to us about your money, how to survive the hard economic times. Steve, what do you have to say about that story? It's a very interesting uh, perspective in terms of uh, rehabilitation. And I think um, given what our president did the other day in terms of being able to sign the law that um, allows prisoners to give affordable labor to the community, I think, it's, it's, I think humanity is evolving in terms of being able to rehabilitate mm -hmm. people who have been in prison. But it's, it's, it's kind of interesting and, and, and in, in, in a way making rehabilitation even better because I don't think there's any other country that's been able to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And let's talk about the first story that we had about CAPSA, you know, talking about different ways of curbing corruption in the country because even as the finance bill was passed by members of parliament, concerns by Kenyans was like, we have a lot of uh, loopholes for corruption. I think, I think CAPSA is um, dancing around the real issue. I think they're spending a lot of money when they shouldn't be. We have a lot of laws in place to be able to deal with corruption. We have um, the needed institutions. I think Kenyans, uh, we, we're becoming a people that um, are afraid to face issues head on. Mm -hmm. One, I think we can be able to deal with corruption once and for all. We need to strengthen institutions that deal with corruption. We need to overhaul the, the EACC. We need to fund and, and empower the Office of the Public Prosecutor and, and the uh, Directorate of Criminal Investigation. And we need to ensure that we upgrade the technology needed for investigation and, and tracking. And I think if we can be able to strengthen the institutions, we can be able to deal with corruption. Mm -hmm. What KEPS is doing, I think what KEPS needs to do is just basically focus on, on a civic education and, and be able to educate the public on the wrongs of, of mm -hmm. corruption. But I think in terms of uh, fighting corruption, they need to lend support to the institutions that um, fight corruption instead of coming up with other, other, other policies or other frameworks that will be counterproductive mm -hmm. to what already is being done. Okay. Yeah. Good morning, Ating, about your money, the plight of consumers in the country. Tell me, as a Kenyan, how should I use my money? Uh, I think first and foremost, uh, the Kepsa story was looking at uh, how much money we lose to corruption. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking at um, a third of a budget. That's around 700 um, billion a year. And this is a lot of money. So any other story about um, dealing with corruption, talking about referendum to reduce uh, the number of our representatives or CAPS are coming up with this particular framework is actually null and void. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, we are the ones who are actually suffering. Uh, in terms of taxation, we are the fourth, one of the highest taxed citizens in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, whereby for every 100 shillings you earn, 49 shillings go to the government. So you're left with 51 shillings to survive on. Whichever you look at it, if it's 10,000, you know, we're looking at um, 4,900 mm -hmm. going to the government. Mm -hmm. And this has made, has made it very difficult. When um, fuel uh, charges actually increased a couple of weeks ago, we've seen life in terms of our cost going up by at least 30%. So this has made it very difficult for families mm -hmm. to actually survive. We're seeing people trying to find out ways to be able to survive. And the unfortunate thing is that um, while expenses and, and expenditure go up, our salaries and wages actually either re re remain the same or actually being reduced. Mm -hmm. uh, either you accept a, a salary cut or you're fired. Yeah, and you know, I was even about to ask you that because when you said that we need to look for ways on how to survive, because right now, following the passage of the finance bill, now everything is taxed. When you use your you know money transfer, mobile money transfer system, money is taxed. You go to True. the ATM, money is taxed. When you get paid, your money is taxed. When you withdraw the money... Yeah, we are actually over... Bank, it's, because it's, it's taxed. I'm being taxed by the government. When I go buy something from the supermarket, there's VAT. When you go to the hotel, there's, there's VAT. There's tourism levy. Yeah, so it. clearly, how can I survive as a Kenyan? When you Should I stop? The road, there's road levy. There's yeah, when, you, when levy. you're buying fuel, there's levy there. So... As a Kenyan, how should I survive? Because I'm just wondering, when I, I look think, at every tax that I'm, that I'm being taxed, it's, it's think, just too I much. Think, I think the first thing that we need to do is to be able to interrogate what actually we are going through. We need to interrogate what, what's the purpose of all these taxes. For example, when I get my salary, I'm taxed. When I'm going to withdraw it, I'm taxed. When I spend it, I'm taxed. We have a lot of um, 
different levels of taxes. And I read somewhere yesterday about where county governments are also levying their own kind of taxes. And, and making, even Boda Boda are going to be paying 20 shillings. In my, count, in my county, Bungoma, Boda Boda are paying 500 shillings now a month, which, which makes it very, very hard. So one, we need to interrogate what you're going through to be able to understand the best way to be able to deal with it. Because I think we, we've been sheep for too long. We've accepted whatever come, comes away for too long. And this is affecting our families. Mm -hmm. This is affecting our children. We're seeing families breaking up because, um, you know, people who are breadwinners can no longer be able to support this. And the ripple effect is actually very dire and very mm -hmm. sad. And um, as I said, people are looking, we need to look for other alternative means to survive because 49 shillings going to the government, leaving you 51 shillings. You cannot be able to live on it. Yeah. Uh, as I speak last night, for example, from Webuye, people are having actually it's very tough in terms of uh, being able to meet their own health care. Okay. You, 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 you have a, a wife who's about to deliver. Mm -hmm. You cannot afford basic admission fees for her to be able to be checked, mm -hmm. for her to be able to deliver. And it's becoming very difficult. And, and the ripple effect across the board is actually worse. People were able to afford two meals a day. Mm -hmm. Now they can hardly afford a meal a day. You leave home, you've not taken breakfast, you've only taken water. You've got a family, you've got kids wondering how you're going to, be able to take care of them mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And, and, and um, it's very unfortunate that um, in as much as I do understand the position of the government and where they are, they are between a hard place and a rock in terms of being able to pay our, our, our debts because we're looking at um, a trillion of our budget going to just paying debts alone. And this is a huge aspect. And as much as um, other analysts and economics can say that this is within manageable levels, mm -hmm. for me, I don't think it is. Because one, we, we're doing projects mm -hmm. that do not have the trickle-down effect to the mm -hmm. common person to be able to benefit from it. Okay. If I ask an ordinary Kenyan from Bungoma, Malaba, how the SGR has benefited them. They have no understanding of what it is. Mm -hmm. It is. If I ask someone from Nyeri what the SGR has done for them, there's no basic they have understanding. No idea. Even someone from Akweni, who's yeah. next to it, will not be able to understand it. And for me, I think it's time we're able to interrogate the policies of, of this government to be able to understand exactly where our country is heading. Okay. Let's, let's draw it down to the common one, aren't you? Assume someone is earning 10,000 shillings because you're talking about the plight of consumers, how you need to survive, you know, how to manage your finances. Someone is earning 10,000 shillings. This 10,000 shillings, I need to pay rent. I need to take care of my wife or my, my children. So if you're earning 10,000, I'm assuming both, uh, assuming it's a family, husband and wife, they're both earning maybe the same amount, that's 20,000. It's very difficult to survive with that amount currently in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Uh, because um, out of that 20,000, probably around 8,000 will go to the government in terms of taxes. From the 20,000? From the 20,000. So that means you rem you're remaining with 12,000? You're remaining 12,000, probably remove 4,000, 2,000, 2,000 each for transport, which is not enough. So probably we'll be looking at walking to work in the morning and then... Uh, I mean, take, taking a matter to work in the morning and then walking back in the evening, praying that it doesn't rain. So 12,000 minus 4, you're you left with probably 8. Yes, 8,000. Uh, this food, there's emergency. Uh, you have to send some money back home. It's not enough. And when you're sending that money back home again, you're taxed. You, you're being taxed. So basically, it's more the same like Kenyans are living from hand to mouth. Actually, that is it. And, and, and um, we've been doing research on the best way to survive. A couple of issues, a couple of factors that uh, Kenyans can be able to do to be able to survive. And even if you look at it, first, one of the most important things is now stop spending. So you how do we stop spending? Live on a budget. I mean, understand priority in terms of budget. So which is rent? Basically, in fact, which is food? Food comes first. Rent? Transport. Because if you don't go to work, you can get paid. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're seeing a lot of job losses. We're seeing a lot of um, a lot of investors relocating to the Ethiopia, Rwanda, Tanzania. So we are wondering exactly what's really going on, and, and a lot of people losing jobs. So uh, what what's happening is, um, if you can be able to relocate to an affordable town, that will be easier for you and for your family. So, so that you are you suggesting that if I stay in Nairobi, I should I can't afford the life of Nairobi? If I you've just lost your job, back. if you've lost your job, okay. And, 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 and you do not want to, to, to subject your family to more suffering. Just go to up country? Not necessarily up country, to a town that you, uh, that's easy to afford. But and, which, town is, but because For which example, town is, someone which like town me, is easy to afford? Because the economy is bad everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. Yes, it is. Because realistically see, speaking, someone who's in up country, 
always has the mentality that someone in Nairobi Ruby has money. Has better and life. And yeah, and then always make phone calls. Oh, we need money for this, we need money for that. Actually, life up country is better. People who live in Bungoma, Kakamega, have, a, have it better because it's cheaper in terms of um, getting food produce. Because, I mean, that's where they're produced from. But for me, what, what I'm trying to say is um, the first important thing is someone needs to do a budget. Live on a budget, stop spending. Spend mm -hmm. when it's necessary only. So we're looking at um, looking for affordable housing, uh, trying to adjust your living standards, mm -hmm. coming from a very high-end area to an area you can be able to afford. Uh, normally, buying uh, normally we go to supermarket and buy expensive foods alone. Uh, one of the best ways to do is now buy wholesale. Mm -hmm. Talk to your friends, mm -hmm. come come together, say maybe five families, go to a wholesale shop, buy together, split the the goods and services that you're able to get. And this way you'll be able to survive more because now supermarkets are very expensive. Mm -hmm. Buying things alone is actually becoming very expensive. Uh, NHIF is important in terms of health. So ensuring that your NHIF is up to date mm -hmm. because right now if you get sick and you don't have a salary, that, I mean, you don't have enough money to go to Aga Khan or to any other hospital, NHIF will be able to actually cut for you at least at Kenyatta or any other uh, level four hospital mm -hmm. within your county. Uh, the other aspect is um, change your mode of, of, of transportation. Uh, now you have to look at means of um, off peak hours. If it used to going to work at peak hours or uh, going home at peak hours, now you have to look at uh, going home at off peak hours. If you like having some entertainment kind of uh, fun whereby you hang out with friends on Fridays or Saturdays, that has to be cut out mm -hmm. completely. Mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, if you, you know, looking at how electricity has also become expensive. For example, yeah. I used to use around 1,000 shillings a week, and I'm using 1,500 a week. Mm -hmm. So that means I have to stop watching a lot of TV, have to stop watching a lot of, uh, having a lot of gadgets on, just so using just electricity. you just adjust your life. Basically everything is now adjusting to basics. That way, if you're looking at either being able to have some money, or being able to invest. That is the only way. Having a critical budget that can be able to actually support that. Mm -hmm. And because with the current situation, it's not very easy to save. I mean, we're looking at the stock market. Uh, investors' wealth is actually plummeting sharply. Mm -hmm. We're losing billions every day because the economy is actually, we, 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 we've entered what we call a technical recession mm -hmm. where actually growth is in the negative mm -hmm. for now until certain aspects in the macroeconomic aspect mm -hmm. are actually dealt with. So what with. would you tell a Kenyan who probably has debt to pay because the economy is, is, is really tough and someone has debt with a bank or you borrowed money, how do you survive? I was actually coming to that in terms of being able to now live on a, on, on a prudent budget. Mm -hmm. uh, ha we all have debt. And I think the best way right now to deal with debt is be able to talk to the person you owe money to. Let them understand your situation because silence does not actually help. Who would? <laughs> but Biko, who would understand? Like, no, I mean, we are bo both of us are living in Kenya. Then you owe me money. The first... Then you come and tell me, oh, I cannot no, pay you now. No, communication <laughs> is the first step so that this yeah. person doesn't think they loaned you money and you're not willing to pay back. So once you communicate to them, you're able to give them a plan. And as you're restructuring your budget, uh -huh. you can be able to see how much money you can be able to save yeah. to start paying. And especially now, with we, most of us have a lot of loans on mobile, four or five loans across the board. It's actually very critical. And these ones, you can talk to them. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do is have a budget that can help you pay one loan, mm -hmm. borrow Borrow again, pay the next, borrow again, pay, pay the next. So, so are you, you, are you encouraging do? me or another Kenyan outside there to assume I have maybe I owe five people money. Yes. So I borrow money from here to pay. Then what again I, I go borrow see, money from here to pay. There, like, there, there are two aspects. Uh -huh. If you owe someone money, someone you can talk to, it's different. Yeah. You can talk to them and reschedule the repayments okay. uh, module. Mm -hmm. But if you have a mobile loan, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to talk to them. And if you don't want to mess up your credit history, the best way to do it, you don't have anyone else to borrow and no other more platforms to borrow. The issue is to have a strict budget, see how much money you can be able to save, pay this one, pay mm -hmm. the first loan. Once you pay the first loan, you'll be clean with them. Then you have to look at how best way to pay the other four loans. So the only other way is borrow again, which will give you another month on this one to pay this loan that is due today. But am I, am I not just adding debt on top of debt? Because if I borrow maybe from this mobile transfer money service, A, yes. to pay B, 
Yeah. Of course, you, so you, 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 of course, B, of course you're still, of course you're still going to be caught up in the rat race of paying debts. Yeah. But what I'm trying to say is that once you get a hold of your finances and once you're able to come up with a budget and be able to save, mm -hmm. you can be able to clear one loan this month, okay. remain with four loans, mm -hmm. clear the, 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 the second, the other loan next month, remain with three loans like that. That is the only way out. Mm -hmm. If someone, if we don't have a budget and if you're not able to reduce your entertainment spending, uh, reduce your, your, your budget on, on how you travel, reduce the kind of foods you have. Mm -hmm. Because right now, any Kenyan family affording two meals a day is a luxury. So the issue is, I mean, if you're, you like buying shoes and handbags and things like that, that comes to a stop. You'll have mm -hmm. to do the shoes you have, you'll have to do the handbags you have. If, if you have any investments, look at the kind of investment that I've been able to grow in the mm -hmm. past couple of months. Uh, liquidate the investments, be able to pay off the, the, the loans, so mm -hmm. you can be able to be okay. And if it's actually very tough, relocate to a cheaper, affordable uh, location mm -hmm. of stay, mm -hmm. because that is the only way out. I mean, let's look at a national aspect. Look at the way the country is. We've mm -hmm. been forced, we've been taxed to, to the maximum, yeah. so that you can be able to pay these debts you have. But if we don't do that, we'll probably be able to give, we'll, we'll be forced to give up on our mm -hmm. key collateral then assets. Then it also means a parent also needs to train their kids to live within their means. And this because is Because at times you'll see parents going with their children to, for, to the supermarket for shopping and the kid will start crying and eat No, this, I want I chocolate, that. I, want, yeah. I, want, I, want, I want this. So well. what do you do? Do you leave your kid at home <laughs> as a way of training or just have to train your kid, let's go, but you won't pick what you want? I, I think... I think um, what the, one, of, one of the things that I've been pushing for and actually a challenge to the financial stakeholders is to have a culture of saving, have a culture of uh, training young people and children to have a budget mm -hmm. because that's the one thing we don't know. Look around you, people who win a lot of money and how we spend our money is actually a big question. Financial prudence is actually a big challenge and it's, it's a big challenge for all of us, even, whether you're educated or not. Having a culture of saving is actually a big challenge. And for me, one, one of the ways when you do a budget is to look at how you can be able to train your children mm -hmm. on, on, on live, one, living within, within your means. Well, I know many, many of us will say, if my country is not living within my means, why yeah. should I? You know, let me live. I will pay off the debts. Mm -hmm. But living within your means gives you the opportunity to be able to invest more and be able to get into an, a lifestyle that can actually be sustainable. Mm -hmm. So uh, one, training your children to live within their means. Uh, training yourself to live within your means, mm -hmm. being able to read and study and watch programs that actually train you and guide you to be better in terms of financial management. Okay. And the, the problem with us Kenyans is that we're not willing to pay consultants to help us manage our money. I'd rather ask my friend in a bar how to save or mm -hmm. where to get deals. But the other thing I forgot in terms of uh, being able to live, help tighten our belts is uh, looking for bargain deals. Uh, I know Christmas is coming and it's going to be very tough and mm -hmm. very expensive. Mm -hmm. So one of the best ways for Kenyans to have a better Christmas is to look for deals, to okay. look for places where they can be able to get bargain deals. Mm -hmm. And uh, plan early. If you're planning to travel, go to Mombasa, go wherever, plan mm -hmm. early. Start saving now. Okay. Having a budget that can actually be able to afford you a mm -hmm. lifestyle that enables you to live within mm -hmm. your means. And what's the best way to shop? Because, you know, when you go to some supermarkets, they have so many offers. And I mean, Kenyans, we are all crazy for offers. <laughs> you exactly. leave this and you'll go for this. The, because the, we, is it that people, supermarkets put offers, so many offers, and you'll end up spending more than what you would have bought. So what is the best way to go about buying this product at this amount and avoiding these so many offers that are in a supermarket? One of the best ways in, when you're creating a budget is to also look at bargain deals, is to be able to compare prices. Most of these supermarkets have online platforms. So you can be able to tell, for example, if I'm looking at um, buying things for the kids, uh, you know, uh, soaps, washing powders, uh, and things like that, I'm, I'm, I'll be able to look at their platforms and be able to compare prices, mm -hmm. note it down. For example, supermarket A has this soap, sh Sorry, soap at maybe 80 shillings. Mm -hmm. B has maybe this, the same product at um, 70 shillings. So the issue of comparing prices, running across them. And, and one, one of the, the critical components in terms of uh, creating a budget is to look at the food basket for the family. Mm -hmm. So the things you need basically in the home, sugar, uh, cooking oil, salt, things like that. The things a family needs basically every day to run the kitchen. Once you have this listed down, you can go to look at the prices across different products. Mm -hmm. uh, which platform is easier for me to shop? Mm -hmm. which, which one is easier for me to get at? Mm -hmm. Do I go to a supermarket? Do I go to wholesale? Mm -hmm. I've seen people now looking at wholesale shops 
as, as an alternative in terms of being able to get affordable. The problem with wholesale shops is that if you buy a loan, the goods can actually expire because mm -hmm. you'll buy a lot of products and, and, and they'll not be able to use them on time and the expiry date will actually come. Mm -hmm. But if you buy together with different families, it helps. So co being able to compare prices from uh, different different supermarkets or different mm -hmm. retail shops is actually very critical. The other thing is uh, I, I know people will say I'll buy from a Mamboga within my asset because I will get credit. Yeah. But sometimes buying from her is more expensive than buying from a bigger shop because a bigger shop will have that, that wholesale price okay. than the Mamboga. Okay, thank you so much, Steve Biko, a financial research expert. Just talking to us about your money, how to manage your money and how to live during this um, uh, tough economic times that you're facing right now.